welcome to what I think is going to be my favorite video I ever post on this channel. We are ranking every single Call of Duty map ever. And yes, zombies, not extinction. I will not be doing ghosts. Now, I'm not going to lie. The first ghost map for extinction was pretty good. But otherwise, besides that, it was pretty trash. Oh, no! Anyway, there's going to be a total of 69 nice. maps. I'm doing Black Ops 1 and World at War, like of the classic maps, into one. And I'm going to be doing BO3 Chronicles also separate by itself. And with that, there's going to be a total of 69 nice. total maps. I'm not going to be raiding the Tortured Path into three survival maps i didn't even know there were survival maps until i watched lex's video on it one time and speaking of lex this is a warning i'm sorry lex and when you see this tier list or whatever yeah, it's gonna be bad you also might be saying what is the criteria well the criteria for the zombies list is it's there, my opinion there. it's gonna be like what i enjoyed what i liked off it also a little bit of the communities maybe even when you guys see some of the maps where it's placed maybe it's based off a little bit of reddit it's not but my opinions are pretty trash like i'm being completely serious when i say i feel like my list is actually horrible but it's the list that i love if that makes sense so i love it but i know it's trash anyway into the number 69 spot we have the frozen dawn frozen dawn is literally the worst zombies map of all time and i am sorry actually no i am not sorry dude the map is just so bad i don't even really remember it. i played it like three times it was too big didn't really remember it i remember people saying that the what wonder weapons were pretty good on it i didn't even know there was wonder weapons i couldn't even find box well, i'm sorry to the world war ii lovers but there were some pretty bad maps but moving away from world war ii we have our number 68 spot dur afan i'm gonna be honest i played this map once on vanguard never played it again this map is trash i do think it's better than frozen dawn because at least it like told me like what to do and how to help me because i was so bad but still again i I'm sorry to the world war ii lovers because at number 67 we have the tortured path like i said there was three like survival maps with it that apparently were even better than the tortured path overall i couldn't tell you one thing about tortured path i'm pretty sure this is like where lex said that noah left this map to go play fortnite which do i blame him no not at all get that money up but the tortured path is not fun it's way too big i couldn't really find jug was there even jug on the map i know i don't even think there was wonder weapons i don't know too much about this map i literally played it once as well like i was so happy when i played the final reich and you guys can see where i put that later on to the video and then when the other zombie maps came out, i'm like oh yeah they're bad but speaking of bad at number 66 we have the beast from beyond and let me tell you i played this map multiple times i just did not enjoy it at all i didn't like it it was literally ghost extinction i don't was there even zombies in the map i legitimately don't know if there were zombies i literally had to go to infinite warfare and click on like the films and just do the boss fight by itself because you can do that in infinite warfare now which i think that's really cool because i was not doing the easter egg on the beast whatever what is it called the beast the beast from beyond i couldn't even remember that's how bad it is but seriously the boss fight on this map was actually incredible one of the best boss fights one of the one of the best boss fights we've ever got to date but sadly it's an in infinite warfare and it's on i think the worst infinite warfare map by far number 65 we have a map which i feel like a lot of you guys aren't going to agree with the spot but it's terra maledicta also from vanguard i'm gonna be honest i don't really know too much about this map i just remember it being better than the dura fawn map or something like that i don't really remember the dura fawn i forgot that was number spot yeah 68 but with number 65 with terra maledicta it just wasn't good the gameplay wasn't good it sadly fell under the vanguard's gameplay overall which was really bad the guns i mean they're the same guns as always it kind of told you like what to do and i don't even remember there was a boss fight for this i just don't remember too much about this map but i remember it being better than beast i remember it being better than the beast from beyond and the other maps that we already listed number 64 i can't believe i put this because a couple years ago if we did not have world war ii or vanguard i would probably put this last but we have infection from advanced warfare now as you guys know i do love me some advanced warfare but sadly this map was not it it sadly fell under the advanced warfare zombies theme gameplay overall as well like the biggest thing was pack a punch i think pack a punch being level 20 like it was kind of like a cool concept idea but it just didn't play out well i think we saw that now with like mw3 i think they could do something cool with that but with infection as well the map got locked down you had to do escorts which i didn't really like i'm pretty sure this was the first time we also saw people like actual people i'm pretty sure in this map I just remember playing this map and being in the sewer in the dark. It was scary. I didn't like it. I'm pretty sure there's bosses. There was green smoke and gas when you failed to escort because I always failed to escort because I didn't want to do the escort, but I had to do the escort and I just failed to do it over and over and over. But in number 63, we have Dead Ops 1. And I think this was the worst Dead Ops. I did enjoy 2 and 3 a little bit more, but 1 was all right. I mean, it was kind of new to zombies. It was kind of refreshing, but after playing it twice, it just wasn't that interesting to me. It wasn't that fun as I thought it was going to be. And speaking of repetitive, I have Dead Ops 2 right after that at the number 62 spot. And the reason is because literally just repetitive as well. I didn't think it improved that much. I think it improved from one overall, but not too much. I like how you can just spin your guy and you can just start shooting over and over. At number 61, we have the Shadow Throne. Yes, three World War II maps already. It's kind of disappointing, but 
it is what it is with the shadow throne i honestly don't remember too much of this map either if you just like look at world war three zombies or world war two zombies i don't remember much of anything from this game i'm pretty sure it had a decent dlc weapon if i'm being honest honestly one of my goals is i make this entire video see my list and then what i do is i go to all the zombie maps and play every single zombies map on this list again even multiple times and then do another whole ranking because with you guys see with some of these maps again i'm sorry sorry lex but yeah moving on from the shadow throne i i literally can't even talk about it i don't remember too much about it but at number 60 we have dead ops 3 i'm sorry for all the dead ops lovers i'm pretty much like eliminated it all in the top 60 literally in the top 10 worst maps three of them are dead ops like again i think it got a little bit better than one and two overall but it didn't get too much better in my opinion i'm just not used to playing dead ops like that i didn't really grow up on dead ops so when i had a play dead ups and was like forced to play dead ups it was just completely different completely different style everything like that i don't remember too much about this i'm gonna have to go back and play it again i am excited because i remember when i actually did first play it i remember enjoying it i'm pretty sure i played with some friends and had fun so maybe if i play with some friends again or do some solo runs of it i think i'm gonna enjoy it more but like i said i feel like with dead ups overall it just gets too repetitive at number 59 i know this is gonna trigger some of you guys but we have outbreak from cold war let me tell you, when I talk about repetitive, I think this map is one of the most repetitive maps ever. Respect Treyarch for doing it to make it open world zombies, because as we see now with Monoprix 3 zombies, which I am ranking that, by the way, I think MW3 zombies did a lot better than what we actually saw from Outbreak. So Outbreak was kind of the trial run. And let me tell you, for the first two games of playing that, I had a lot of fun. But after that, being teleported, doing some challenges, it just kind of got boring. I was different from how we saw zombies, because we've never seen the zombies really like this, besides Dead Ops, obviously. I respect them for trying it and honestly I just remember having a little bit of fun with it obviously it falls into the cold war guns I feel like the cold war guns weren't that great for zombies I don't know that's probably just me saying that but heading on to number 58 I know a lot of you guys are gonna be mad because this map is higher than the outbreak from cold war but we have shallon shuffle now Lex described it perfectly when he said he had to look up a YouTube video on where to find jug because where is jug on this map where is pack a punch on this map where is everything that's good the only thing I remember being good was the one lady wait where is that attack on radioactive thing I don't know. I don't know which one I'm even talking about. The weapons on this map were honestly really sick, really cool. I felt like I was like a ninja turtle going all around. I loved it, but I felt like it was like a New York themed and it should have been more New York themed. I don't know. I kind of got the vibes of it, but the map didn't play well. You had to go on two roofs. I remember box being away. Like as soon as I got like the teddy bear or whatever the equivalent of teddy bear was, I don't even remember. I literally had to run all the way across the entire map to get box again. And I still could not find Joe. Heading to number 57, we have Blood of the Dead. Now, now with Blood of the Dead, I didn't really rank this with how like Mob of the Dead is because I feel like it's kind of two different maps. There's like only like a part of the map that's kind of the same, but you're kind of outside of the whole entire actual like Alcatraz themed. I will say Blood of the Dead did have some of the best songs. I did love that. I remember showing, seeing the trailers for this. This game was hype. I probably have some of my favorite Call of Duty memories on Blood of the Dead, if I'm being honest. I played with a lot of friends, had a lot of fun. I remember coming out and I had a lot of fun. But I feel like Brutus in this map was just really annoying. It just fell into the Black Ops 4 engine. It just did not play that well. I think if they did a third redemption of this map, like third time trying to make it, I think they would absolutely nail it on the head, depending on what kind of gameplay and mechanics we have, whether it's like BO3 or BO2, honestly. I feel like Blood of Dead would have been perfect. Also, another thing I didn't like about it was the catwalk. Obviously, the catwalk was one of the most annoying things. I remember my first time playing on catwalk, I died. And then you know what I did? I loaded it up again and did catwalk again and died again. It was just honestly annoying. But honestly, for the, all the new players, I'm sorry if you guys haven't played that map. Go try to play that map. Actually, no, 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 I don't recommend that map. Do not play that map. Play the other maps. But if you were to play that map, be careful, look out, and you're dead. You're not making it. I'm sorry. Number 56, we have Dead of the Night. Dead of the Night was a eh map. I mean, honestly, the characters weren't that cool. I didn't even know that this map honestly came out at the time. I'm pretty sure they didn't tell us it was like coming out. Maybe they did like a week before, but it kind of just dropped and I was excited for it. I thought the characters were cool. They weren't cool. The maps weren't that cool. The Easter egg was okay. Wasn't really good. Wasn't really bad. I kind of like the ways how you like look through stuff and find stuff for kind of like pack a punch. It was all kind of cool and new in a sense, but still it kind of fell into the BO4 mechanics of the game of not being good. And I feel like BO4 was really hit or miss. That just might be me, but we have another Black Ops 4 map. It's a little bit better than that. But at number 55, we have Alpha Omega. Uh, Nuketown Zombies did not play that well, sadly. I thought this map was going to be really good, especially since I knew it was another Nuketown map. Nuketown's my favorite multiplayer map. I love it 24-7. We'll do that all the time. And especially after we already got Nuketown being dark, I thought maybe a light Nuketown zombie map would have been sick. Again, fell into the BO4 mechanics. Didn't really do that good, and I'm sorry about this pick, because I feel like you either love or you hate this map. At 
number 54. I can't believe I'm ranking it this high, but I'd rather play this map than every single map we just said because it's honestly a little bit fun. We have number 54, Metro. And honestly, this map, the most bare bone maps ever. You just get a box, which I think was pretty cool. Just usually sit in the corner, but a lava and just spray. Don't think I ever got past round 20, but you know what? It's all right because we had fun. I just remember having a lot of memories with my cousins playing on this because we didn't really want to play transit at the time. We just wanted to play more of actual the Metro and the farm and town. And we'd always go to Metro because it wasn't too hard and it wasn't easy though. And I honestly kind of kicked off my love for the rest of the Black Ops 2 Zombies, which is playing Metro. It also helped me just have fun running around, trying to get better at Zombies. I feel like I actually got better at Black Ops 2 Zombies because of Metro trying to train, trying to run, trying not to die from the zombie because there was nowhere to run. At number 53, a lot of you guys are gonna be mad. I actually decently like this map. I mean, it's this high up on the list, but we have Voyage of Despair. Now, Voyage of Despair, you might be saying, why is it this high? It's because honestly, it was a Titanic themed. I thought it was really sick. I didn't like the whole underwater part where you had to go to like the pack punch and like a perk and you had to swim underwater. Didn't like that. The specialists in Black Ops 4 also made this map a lot better. The guns obviously on this map, I mean, they're whatever. I remember Lex saying, I'm pretty sure it was like baby Treyarch's map or something. Like they loved this map. I remember, I think he made like a joke saying like, what is this? And Jason Blood that was behind like sad crying. I'm pretty sure. This map, really cool thought, really cool. Should have been really good but it just didn't turn out that way, which really does suck because I would have loved a sick Titanic themed zombies. But like I said, once again, it kind of fell into the BO4 mechanics. And honestly, I feel like I'm being on BO4 too much, but I don't know. I, I mean, I really did like BO4 zombies, but I feel like the mechanics and overall just kind of let it down. At number 52, we have Attack of the Radioactive thing. The boss fight, the entire crap, I thought was really sick. The only bad thing I will say about this entire map was that I was colorblind for like the first 30 minutes playing this map. Easter egg, all right, pretty cool. They had some pretty cool steps along the way. I would say everything else about this map was the definition of mid. It kind of fell into the IW mechanics again. I know I keep going back onto that, but with IW, World War II, Vanguard, and BO4, it just kind of seemed like it was a little bit broken. I think the radioactive thing would definitely would have been higher if I was able to see colors, because as soon as you turn that power on, man, it looked beautiful, like Ascension. Number 51, don't need to explain much. We have farm. Not too easy, not too hard, fun map. I remember playing grief mode a ton on this map. That was a lot of fun. It was four on four, people running around. You had eight people on farm trying to get people stuck in corners, stabbing people, messing around with them. I have so many memories growing up on this map, and honestly, I love this map. It was such a fun time, but it shouldn't be too high because there's really nothing on this map. Literally, it's just a bare bone survival map. Coming at number 50, we have finally a Cold War map. We have Firebase Z. Worst Cold War map, not too horrible though. I just didn't really like the lockdown and how there was a giant boss you had to run to to go do stuff. Like I was playing my, I remember the first time I was playing it, I was just chilling in favorite by Z. I was like, it kind of reminds me of Garad Kroby in a way. It kind of gives me like vibes of Garad Kroby. And then there was a giant guy, literally like Yao Ming size, even taller, double it, triple it. Honestly, probably like 100 times it. It lacks on the map, which honestly, I just didn't really like overall. Cold War mechanics, pretty cool. But for Firebase Z, did it play that well? Be honest with yourself. No, it wasn't that great. It's definitely better than all the maps I said for sure. Number 49, we actually have a BO1 slash World of War version, Shangri-La. Now, the reason is because I didn't really play this map. I played it a couple times. I realized it was way too hard. I like the BO3 Conic Rolls one way more than the BO1 one. But this map, I'll give respect. It's very hard. And if you want to become good at zombies, go play this map. I really don't have much to say. I remember like the monkeys and the Easter egg just being impossible to do on solo. But overall, it's Shangri-La. It's the BO1 World at War version. Kind of one of the first maps ever. I think it was like the sixth map ever coming out, but it wasn't bad. Even though it's ranked 49, I guess it's technically bad, but whatever. 48, we have the World at War Sheena Numa version. I mean, what are you saying? This is the worst Sheena Numa version? Yes, because I mean, it, the only good thing I really see out of this map is that you can get to any round you ever want to, which is really sick. But at the same time, it's like, it's whatever. It's the older version. I like the gobble gums a lot more. That's that's why I think Dashina Numa is probably the worst one World at War. I mean, I still had a lot of fun with it, but still, I think it was kind of the worst one. Okay, we're on number 47. And now through the rest of this list, big trigger warning. A lot of you guys are going to be mad. Number 47, we have five. I'm going to be honest, didn't really grow up playing five. Every time I did, I kind of quit. I got mad. I went down the elevator, did my thing. Pentagon Thief came by. And that's why I wanted to quit. I think really the only good thing I like about this map was the pig. And I could just go stab the pig. Kind of a monster, but you know what? I'm sorry.
I mean, yeah. Frost Wonder Weapon was actually pretty cool, but it was just, I felt like really weak. It just didn't do too much, didn't, ah. But anyway, heading to number 46, Lex, I am sorry. Let me say that, and to anyone else who loves this map, I'm sorry. But at number 46, we have Call of the Dead. I know, I know this is such a bad spot, but let me tell you why. I played this map like only two times in my life. I have yet to actually play Call of the Dead. I might, if this video does good, I might just buy Call of the Dead on like the original 360 or Xbox One or even on my Steam or whatever and play Call of the Dead and start playing a lot to see if I can truly love this map because I want to do another ranking because I missed out on a couple of these maps like Call of the Dead. At the time, we were too broke to buy Call of the Dead, I guess, like the DLC pack. I will say it is like aesthetically pleasing in some kind of way. I don't really like the gray in this fog but it could do, but it was kind of cool to look at the same time. I feel like it did really good compared to like the transit smoke and everything like that. George Romero, classic RIP, wonderful addition to this map. I think, I think he only plays well on this map. Any other map, it would have been bad. Again, I'm sorry because I'm ranking this map higher than Call of the Dead. Number 45, we have the Darkest Shore. I'm gonna be honest, not a bad World War II map, but it wasn't that great. Again, with the fog thing, I think it was better than Call of the Dead. You could at least see a little bit. But I remember there was times where you literally couldn't see at all. The minecart in this map was pretty cool. I remember trying to get power box. Honestly, that was all fine. That was pretty easy. I enjoyed it. Played a lot with my cousin. A lot of nostalgia behind this map is the reason why it's in at the number 45 spot. At number 44, we have the BO1 Ascension. I like the BO3 one a lot better. The only reason I don't really like this is because, like I said, with the attack on radioactive thing, really dry in color couldn't see anything as soon as you turn on power it's a lot better but in the b1 version the monkeys the monkeys were so annoying i couldn't do anything i tried doing stuff on this map but the monkeys were annoying i think it played so much better in bo3 and i think they really perfected it in bo3 bo1 you could say is better i remember there being a lot of glitches i remember dying a lot when i was trying to turn on pack a punch dude ugh, those memories they were just pain memories though and at number 43 we have bo1 moon and i'm sorry I know a lot of you guys are gonna be triggered by this, but again, I didn't really grow up on this map. I did a little bit. I remember playing it quite a bit. The only reason I didn't like it because the starting area at the time was really hard. Now looking at the starting area, I honestly love it. I think it's sick to get your points, to get pack, to get jug or speed. I think that's a really cool addition. You can go and then you can teleport. And then you have a spaceman just chasing you the entire time, which I think is cool. But at the same time, it's annoying, it's repetitive. It's like George Romero, like, leave me alone let me do up my thing the wave gun in this was also very sick like literally the wonder weapon is one of my favorite wonder weapons of all time i didn't know about the space dog thing either for a long time but it's really cool as well i think in the bo1 like i said i think bo3 just absolutely crushes the moon on this but still it moon wasn't one of my favorite maps i am sorry i feel like i'm gonna be saying that a lot because like i said my map this bad tier list bad number 42 bo1 kino honestly yeah, not, not pleasing to look at. It's Kino. I don't really know what to say about Kino. The theater and all that was kind of cool to run around to train outside, getting Thunder Gun. Really cool. Trying to do the trap. I wasn't that good at the trap, but doing the trap to try to get high rounds and be one Kino was fun. Honestly, it was a little bit scary at the time too, but I, I just remember having a lot of fun running around that map, but not as much fun as number 41, Tagged or Toten. I remember getting round 100. This was, I think, one of my first maps to ever get round 100 on because I had like the pack a punch rocket launcher, sat by a window, and just sprayed the rocket launcher the entire time using my specialist weapons, using, I'm pretty sure, EMPs at the time, something like that. This map is obviously Call of the Dead, but just reimagined. I think this looked a lot better. I think it played a lot better. It wasn't as annoying, wasn't as repetitive, but fell into the bo4 engine so it can't be too high at number 40 we have carrier from advanced warfare like i said i do love me some advanced warfare the laser tag was really sick this map like seeing the, all the water seeing sharks on this map was actually crazy at the time you could play like mini games almost on this map it was kind of sick the only mini game thing i didn't like was like the s and d i felt like i was playing valorant without the specialists literally had to like go defuse bombs as i had normal people shooting me the zombies coming up me boss zombies coming up me honestly that's what kind of turns in a way but overall i think this map is actually pretty decent but not as decent as number 39 transit now let me tell you the only reason i think transit is this high is because of the memories on this map i can't tell you how many times i've actually played transit whether i loved it or whether i did not love it i had so much fun i honestly enjoyed when the bus would leave me or if i would get in the bus and purposely leave my cousin behind 
one of the best memories you can't tell me you did not have like a ton of fun memories on this map whether it played good or whether it played bad honestly the maps and the vibes are awesome on this map but the gameplay was really lackluster there was too much you had obviously metro town farm you just had all that stuff getting pack a bunch was kind of hard because you had to like wait for stuff getting box was also pretty was also pretty annoying because i feel like i only get like one or two boss hits and the next thing you know it the boss is taking off chasing after the bosses i got the little dog mini things jumping all over me trying to knife them as well getting to the other spot lava on the ground everywhere that's why i think it's pretty low but the memories on this map golden number 38 zetsbo noshima worst bo3 map but not a bad map overall i just the only thing that i didn't really like with this map was the glitches obviously i think most of the glitches are patched now but i haven't really played since then because i just didn't really enjoy this map because i would literally get a glitch where i died randomly trying to get the buckets i swear every time i got a bucket one of those boss guys would come up ah not fun i will say introducing the marshall 16 was perfect for this map it really did defeat those one like kind of like boss little zombies really sick really loved it getting pack punch was okay didn't really like the whole underwater thing i don't get why we keep going back to that i'm just not the biggest fan of where we have to go underwater and shoot zombies and everything like that either way this map is still not horrible but it's the worst black ops 3 zombies map and i feel like you guys would be lying if you guys did not agree with that tell me it's not the worst what map could be worse than that another trigger warning number 37 i'll let you quick take your guess on what you should think it is you are wrong it's mob of the dead mob of the dead if i'm being honest i just played this map like twice when i was growing up i had fun but not too much fun to rank it even higher honestly i am really really sorry about having mob of the dead this slow i think brutus was really hard at the time like i said a lot of these maps i haven't really played in a long time and og mob of the dead is one of them i will say i did have some fun when i did go back a couple years ago and tried it again after playing it for the first time died from brutus again but you know what hey not as bad as blood of the dead at least you guys did something there i know people love this i think patrick or smith plays or whatever said that the best it's literally a movie inside a map and i literally cannot describe that better i think that's one of the best things you can ever say about this map it is like a movie i can see them making a movie off this cast with that like i remember watching the intro credits when i was first getting in dude i was scared but i was excited as well i think if i just played more of this map i think i would like it more because i just remember never being able to get pack a punch never being able to like actually like make the thing you can fly over honestly i just need more hours into this and that's why it's at number 37 i'm sorry number 36 we're officially eliminating this map but we have chronicle shangri la like i said way better than the original still really hard but you pretty much need friends to play on this map the only reason i would play this solo is to have a challenge and to try to get some kind of high round by myself the gobble gums obviously help it i love the gobble gum feature in black ops 3 i think it made literally all the chronicle maps so much better obviously not that much better to make it higher ranked for shangri-la number 35 it's better than five we have classified now i can go into detail about classified but i really can't because i don't remember too much it's just literally just five with an extra door i think it played better i think it looked a lot better i would say for bo4 like the graphics i would say for the bo4 engine i would say this map actually played really well i think classified is underrated i do still stand by it being better than five also the pig like i was talking about earlier the pig was also in 4k the pig looked nice you can still knife that honestly i th think honestly it's kind of hard to say like what was actually better than this map i just think it just looked better i think everything was more balanced i think they added the extra room which made it even better the thing that was really bad about this was like the og crew like the og og crew of normal five really wasn't there and i really didn't get those vibes from it number 34 we have the second worst cold war map which i know a lot of people think this is like the best cold war map but i don't really see why it's mauer der toten i think the map is too dark i think it plays really well with like all the zip lines and all that but i don't give it really that much credit after that number 33 we're also eliminating this map it's better than the bo1 version but we have chronicles moon let me tell you it is a bit better than the original moon still not too much better i like how you can use your gobble gums in the starting when you go back kind of makes it more of a challenge honestly what i can say about this map wonder weapon is sick the guy following you in the bo3 chronicles i feel like is better than the original one the easter egg on this definitely makes it better and easier with the gobble gums i really do like the easter egg with the chronicles version i need to number 32 we have nuketown way better than alpha omega is it better than every single map that i already listed i mean obviously yes it's my tier list i like how you can get random perks from from this guy you don't know what's going to be what i'm pretty much a gambler i feel like i gamble a lot not money but like on other things and with nuketown i had a lot of fun just running around doing whatever doing whatever i could do anything i want i could do whatever i want i'm repeating myself repeating myself because that's what i think nuketown is 
It's just repeating factor over and over, but it's a little with a little bit of spice because of the random perks, random pack a punch. You don't know when you're going to be getting it, but I think that's a pretty cool factor of it. It was hard. You could get some crazy zombie training clips on this. Honestly, I don't think Nuketown is bad as you say it is. For like a bare bone survival map, Nuketown is one of the best of them. Another map that I think a lot of people are going to be kind of triggered at is the World at War slash BO1 version of Darius. I think the giant plays a lot better, but not too much better if you guys know what i mean i mean the original is kind of cool it's literally a bare bones it was the fourth map that ever came out introduced really like pack a punch with sick feature i'm so glad we got that at the time a lot of memories on this map but i think i had more memories on the giant and that's why the giant is gonna be ranked higher than that original to reese number 30 we have probably the scariest map of all time world at war Vrucht. let me tell you world at war Vrucht was beyond scary i remember playing this at like 10 p.m which was late during my time growing up literally past my bedtime at the time but i would be scared of this map you're running around you have no idea like where to go you didn't know what side you were going to spawn on dude this map just has a lot of scary memories for me and i remember just growing up and i remember like dude Varuk is scary but that's what makes it fun one of the hardest if not the hardest zombies map i think ever obviously bo3 chronicles makes it easier and that's why i ranked it higher because i had a little bit more fun on that but the world at war version i think is really good I'm doing this joke again but not as good as chronicles nocturne jatotem original map plays really well with chronicles with gobgums i think the wonder fizz also adds an amazing feature to this but it is really slow like the first 10 rounds dude i'm literally sitting there i literally edited almost like i felt like an entire video one time because i was trying to get round 100 on chronicles knock i'm just waiting for them i have to get my gobble gum to get like power vacuum so i can get a nuke or something to try to end the round but then it's the worst when you use that nuke and it didn't end the round and still a zombie left and you're waiting 10 minutes for the zombie number 28 another trigger warning i'm sorry we have buried oh, buried like i said didn't grow up too much of playing with it i think the wonder weapon was all right i know a lot of people liked it obviously leroy jenkins sick addition to this map i think he played just really well but i will say he was another thing that was kind of repetitive to do to try to make him go everywhere to break stuff i just didn't really like it after playing it so many times pack a punch to get to pack a punch was really sick i love the maze i love the witches love the house honestly vulture's egg was also a very underrated perk i'm glad we kind of saw it come back a little bit some of the older call of duty zombie games we got but still i don't think it's as good as number 27 origins now listen to me i did not play og origins at all i went back to it like the other year during like covid or during lockdown and i played the original origins i realized it was not even close to as good as the bo3 chronicles origins number 26 you guys are probably waiting for this you guys probably won't believe why this is here but i'm gonna quick tell you why it is obviously number 26 we have mw3 zombies now the reason why it's higher than all of these maps is because of the borealis grind it's a giant open world zombie map did outbreak cold war so much better and i really do think it deserves to be in this spot because of the borealis grind get rid of the borealis grind and this map probably falls back to all the way to like number 40 now around that spot i would say without the zombie camel grind it's not as high but with the zombie camel grind and with bioluminescent as well getting getting everything with the mw2 guns and mw3 zombies honestly the reason it's up here is because of the zombie camel grind i would say some of the contracts are kind of fun like the infected strongholds i like to do i like the one where you have to escort some stuff it's all pretty okay but like i said without the zombies camos yeah they're gone the map is boop number 25 we have the chronicles version of sheena numa like i said way better than original because of gobble gums there's a wonder fizz on it i kind of like the vibes of this map the traps i think were a lot better obviously there's no glitch we can get super high rounds but overall i think this map is pretty good a lot better than the original in my opinion i know that could be a little bit of a hot take for some people but at number 24 we have this version is actually better than the chronicles version which is kind of crazy but we have world at war slash like bo1 nocturne to totem and the reason i think noct is this high and this good i know it's like the original zombies map and it's really boring especially the original for the first what 10 rounds first round you're sitting there for 20 minutes but you get past that you get the box you get the fire gun like having the flamethrower or the fire gun whatever you want to call it flamethrower wait flamethrower once you get the flamethrower honestly this map is so good honestly it brought back a lot of memories trying to get in a glitch spot trying to play randoms i remember playing randoms with people on this map they would get so mad using the ray gun for the first time honestly for the first zombies map and being like a bare bones zombies like theme playlist whatever honestly it played really well I know for being the first map it should be a lot lower but honestly that's where like kind of like nostalgia takes over for me number 23 we have another completely bare bones zombie map but i felt like it played super super good we have gross house from world war ii zombies now i know a lot of you have not played this map 
but like I said, literally you can see like half of the map from the screenshot. Still good random map. If you wanted to have fun, try train to get better. Grossen House is a great zombies map for that and for you. Now this is gonna be crazy, but I'm sorry. At number 22, we have Sheena Numa, the Vanguard version. I voted Sheena Numa Vanguard as my favorite. I think this map plays super good on the Vanguard one. I like the coherent, coherent, whatever, where you have to like use your heart, get like some special perk bonuses. I really do like that. I think with Vanguard, I think if they did that again in like MW3 Zombies, I think it could play really well, but it fell into the Vanguard system. Obviously, this is one of my favorite Vanguard zombie maps. One of the only Vanguard zombie maps I like, as you guys can tell. And honestly, I think this was my favorite Shino Numa version. I like the perks and how they're laid out. I like the box. I like how they expanded the map. Honestly, the training areas on this map were also pretty good. Honestly, my favorite Shino Numa. Number 21. Don't have to say much about this map, but we have Chronicles Kino. Kind of cool. I mean, obviously, it made Gobble Gums play make this map more playable a lot more high zombie rounds on this map which i think is also really sick thanks to gobble gums i think that just makes the map so much better and honestly i think kino looks really good outside at least back alley looks good i mean in the theater looks pretty cool i like the noble crawlers a lot more in this map the actual original one but yeah still it's ranked number 21 now it's going to start kind of getting serious because we're at our number 20 spot which is another very very classic but great and an amazing survival map we have town now town is a great map i love the pack punch in the middle i love how this map plays you can train really easily but it's still kind of hard it kind of gives you that scary factor as well it falls into the bo2 guns not being that great pack punch though was really cool i remember playing on this map with a lot of my friends as well great time fun time love it the memories on this map you guys would be lying if you guys told me that this map does not deserve to be at least in the top 40 to 30 maps at number 19 it's better than Doris, but still not that high we have the giant I, like i said i think it did better with the gobble gums and how it looks and like the extra perk and the mini easter eggs and the annihilator honestly made this map better catwalk i know is probably not as fun or as like memorable compared to the original one but still i think it's really good i think it's better with the gobble gums. and at number 18 we have chronicles ascension like i said with the old one i really do think the gobble gums do make this map a lot better it looks really good like when you first turn on power that first second or two dude I'm, I'm getting blown obviously training on this maps i love getting around 100 on this map i'm thinking about trying to like start a little series where i try to get around 100 on every map attempting at least i'd probably start off with ascension because i think ascension is the easiest map of all time to get around 100 on if not let me know what the easiest zombie map is because maybe i can start on that map but i think ascension chronicles version especially is the easiest to actually get round 100 on number 17 this might be a hot take because it's better than mauer to told in my opinion but we have forsaken forsaken you have a little bit of everything on this map really sick i love the starting area where it's not rounds it's kind of like time for rounds and you can go back later on i like how you have to like zip line to go up to like your pack a punch to get dead shot i like the little boss fight honestly i think everything about this map is a little bit underrated but a lot of people didn't really play forsaken when i go ask all my friends and everything they said that they played a lot more of firebase z than forsaken they didn't even know like forsaken was getting released at that time i think it was at the time where a cold war was falling off and people were excited for the next call of duty which didn't turn out that well obviously we know i think forsaken is definitely criminally underrated and that's why it's at the number 17 spot but at number 16 another very underrated map the, i'm pretty sure wait is this the fastest map that finished with the easter egg or it might be like a cold war map because i'm pretty sure someone completed a cold war map way faster but we have raven the redwoods at number 16. honestly i love this map i love the vibes of this map i love the monkeys i love the wonder weapons i love the concert you could go to honestly this map was just a big vibe overall it was fun i enjoyed this when i think of infinite warfare zombies one of the maps i think of is definitely raven the redwood at number 15 not as scary but i think it's better obviously with the gobble gums how many times have i said that 20 times wonder wolf was also really good in this map but it's chronicles verrucked now i just kind of explained why it's already higher before i even set the map but yeah number 14 we have also could be classified as the easiest round 100 to get but i still have yet to get round 100 on this map it's revelations i know you could do like that one trick in verrucked but that aside you get the pothkin servant you can pack a punch you get you get the thunder gun which you can also pack a punch the bosses on this map are pretty easy as long as you have one of those two wonder weapons easter egg is pretty good it's just kind of sad on like how it kind of like ended the zombies storyline and everything like that but honestly a great map to end it off because we saw all of our like little childhood pieces of the map everywhere at once honestly when this map came out really sick looking back at it i think it deserves to be in the okay slightly above average number 13 
Another trigger warning. We have the Archon. Archon. This is a Vanguard Zombies map. Wow. Probably the highest you'll ever see someone vote a Zombies Vanguard map all the way this high. I love this map. Honestly, I think it takes all the other Vanguard Zombies map and does it justice. You might say it's born with tasks. I don't know too much about the Easter egg because I've been grinding like a lot of my zombie camo grind on that map. Honestly, I think the round base for it is really fun. I think like the little steps you have to do for a little bit of everything. I think getting pack punch is really good. I think it turns Darfon and Terra Maledecta into one and just combines it and boom. Like they both had like a baby and they created this map, which is almost a masterpiece. For 12, we have Descent, which ended Advanced Warfare. One of my favorite Call of Duty zombie maps of all time. So many memories. I love Advanced Warfare zombies. I'm honestly, my favorite storyline in Call of Duty zombies history is the Advanced Warfare one. I love it. I want Advanced Warfare zombies too to see what happens. See what happens to Oz. He's my favorite zombie character of all time. Dude, I love the storyline in Advanced Warfare. I know you might say Infection and making like a burger, but who doesn't love cheeseburgers, first of all? The boss fight on this map was cool. I kind of like how you actually teleported to fight him each time. I thought that was a little bit new. I like the vibes of this map, like literally being like underwater Atlantis. I think the jetpack is really good on this map. Impossible for round 100, but maybe Lex will get it one day because I know how much he loves this map. Well, speaking of Lex, Again, I'm sorry. Number 11, Grod Krovi. Not even a top 10 map, but on some days it could be. Dude, I got stuck in like Mr. T Lexify, his round 71. Mine was like round 42. It's so bad, but I'm, I don't know why I'm flexing round 42. I remember getting round 42 like six times. Map plays really well. Easter egg is really sick. The cutscenes are really sick. I'm pretty sure there's like two boss fights. Also going underwater for like little cutscene and going back to spawn, I think was really sick. The dragons, literally the vibes, the castles. Everything about this map was really sick. I have so many hours into this map, but it's not as good as these top 10 maps as we're finally in the top 10. Okay, number 10, I realized I messed up. Honestly, I don't know where my number 10 spot is. I'm forgetting a map because number 10 is gross in house, but it's just not ranked number 10. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting the map. Number nine, Ancient Evil. Now I have Ancient Evil this high, not the best BO4 map, but a very, very, very underrated Black Ops 4 map. I feel like a lot of people didn't even play this map. Wonder Weapons were sick. The Pegasus was really sick. The storyline to like end it, I think, was honestly not that bad. It was pretty cool. Uh, this map, I think, honestly plays super, super well with everything. Everything being around the map, I think it's really sick. But not as good as our number 8 spot, which is 9. Now, 9 deserves to be this high. It deserves to be the best Black Ops 4 map, but not by far. Honestly, having the perks be like a map location was honestly a genius, genius idea. And it played super well. The specialists, the bosses I thought were really cool. Like having like the dog rounds not be like dogs, but being like those like guys that jump at you 24 seven and go choo, 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 choo. try to slice you up. Honestly, really sick to get pack bunch. Obviously really cool. Basic map to get the Easter egg was really sick. I love how you had to do challenges as well to like upgrade your RK5. Like you could get like a, you could get like you're pretty much, I know it's not RK5, but it reminds me of the RK5, but you could get like your pack a bunch pistol right away just by doing like a couple challenges. And honestly, I thought that was really sick. Made like doing like the starting room challenge also really fun. You could do pretty much any challenge on this map and have a lot of fun. To get the shield was also really cool, really nice. I mean, it was really easy. That's why. At number seven, we have my favorite Cold War map, Dime Machine. Honestly, made the camel grind really fun. It was like knocked, but I think it was way better. Better. I think it made it look really cool. I loved how you could like go into the aether it was I'm pretty sure it was called everything was purple You could see jellyfish in the sky honestly really pleasing map to look at played very very well and honestly I would be really surprised if people don't throw this map into their top 10 of all time Unless you just hated Cold War zombies dive machine deserves to be this high number six Outbreak from advanced warfare my favorite advanced warfare map hours days weeks maybe even a year into this map easter egg was my first easter egg i've ever done it was a done on this map love the easter egg love the infection rounds because those were scary those were hard every time you got hit five seconds ticked off five seconds ticked off the only bad thing about this map was honestly the pack a punch system i'm telling you if they had a good pack a punch system we'd be talking about this map for ages and ages as we grow up on why this map was so amazing best advanced warfare map one of the best maps of all time i don't care what you think because you are wrong number five i better see this in the top five for every single person if not you're just a hater but number five we have zombies in space land zombies in space land boss fight amazing to get pack punch amazing the bosses pretty cool the goofy vibes of this map were literally at an all-time high i honestly don't mind going down in this map because i could run around in like this area before i come back and play some mini games 
play basketball, ski ball, some arcade games. Honestly, the coolest zombies map I think we have ever gotten. There's no zombies map like zombies in space land. And I think it really does deserve to be top five in pretty much everyone's list. Coming into the number four spot, we have another one of the best Black Ops 3 zombie maps of all time. We have Shadows of Evil. Shadows of Evil, incredible map. I remember playing it and it was really hard at first, but once you get past like all the hardness, it, okay. Once you get past all like the hard stuff and you actually know how to play this map, it is really sick. Easter egg, I still have yet to ever do the Easter egg because I'm pretty sure you need people to do it. I just don't have friends for it. Oh, please, someone do the Easter egg for me. But I love the perks on this map and like how you can like see which perk is where, where to go. I love all the stuff you have to do to get to pack a punch is really sick. I will say the only bad thing I don't like about this map is how every time I'm running to pack a punch, a zombie just knocks me off and I fall and I die. It's literally the worst thing, but it happens all the time. But I love it for that reason. I love this map. Honestly, one of the coolest themed maps ever. Riding in like a little train thing in the sky a little bit, I guess. What is that called? I don't even know what that's called. Like a metro bus that, that floats. Whatever that is, that's really cool as well. You can get like the type, the original type in that. I thought that was really cool as well. Honestly, what I can say about this map is cool, excellent, and it deserves to be in the fourth spot. Not as high as this. You guys have all been waiting for this. Number three, Die Rise. One of my favorite zombie maps of all time i love this map i remember coming home from school playing it every single day trying to find little tips and tricks about how to get better at this map how to do more at this map the silica fire my favorite wonder weapon of all time i love how you had to do parkour we need more parkour and more zombies i'd love to see some kind of variation of die rise i know obviously the new die rise whatever lex and them are all working on literally cannot wait because this is one of my favorite maps of all time this map is underrated you can't tell me it's not the only reason you don't like it is because you probably died falling off multiple times which i have but i enjoy the map still noble crawlers are like those things i keep jumping could do without i'd rather want dogs but still i think it fits really well into this map getting the key card you could be the original olympia m14 whatever it is it worked super well on this map number two and number one could honestly go either way but number two we have chronicles origins now you might be like whoa i'm kind of surprised it's up that high considering i put origins at the number 27 spot but chronicles origins is a masterpiece every single game you play of chronicles origins is different every single game you play of this will never be the same and that's why i love it you get so many different things to do each game the easter egg getting all the stabs trying to get high rounds the robots the panzers everything about this map i think is super sick super cool like i said every every time you play this map you can always get better at a little bit of something and you'll never truly master this map and i think that's why the replayability on this map is so high because no matter what you're going to be playing this map and you can be getting better at something and you can be getting better at something over and over and obviously the number one spot i think we all know what it is at this point it's de or known as derise and drag derise and drag best zombies map ever basically reminds me of a baby origins with less to do but it was one of my first easter eggs i did as well I love the Easter egg. I think the Easter egg was literally one of the coolest things we could ever do. Storyline with Tank Dempsey also was really cool. I love the vibes of Horizon Track with all the dragons. Brought back the mob of the dead slash blood of the dead hounds on the wall as well. To get all the bows reminded me of the ice staffs, but a little bit better. The lightning bow is my baby. Honestly, I have too much good things to say about this map. The tram fuse, the pack a punch, the wall running. Really sick, really cool. I love this map. Anyway, this has been me ranking every single Call of Duty Zombies map. I do plan on playing every single zombie map again. Think of this as like a beta video or like a trailer video leading to the next really big one. I'm gonna play every single map and rate every single map again. Also, again, I'm sorry to everyone. I know this list is so bad. You gotta admit, the, the first like 20 picks weren't too bad. The next 20 picks were pretty bad and the ending wasn't as bad maybe i don't know but anyway i'll see you guys in the next video thank you guys for watching like i said this is one of my favorite videos i've ever posted and yeah peace have a good day